Welcome to the Augmented Intelligence Podcast. I'm your host, Omar Haroon, the co-founder and CEO of Udia. I'm really excited to be joined today by Hemant Taneja. Uh, Hemant is a very well-known and one of the more successful investors and entrepreneurs and visionaries in Silicon Valley. And we're all talking about augmented intelligence. In many ways, he had this vision and wrote about it in his book, Unscaled, in 2018, which feels like decades ago. Um, so I'd, I'd love to start by having him on just maybe introduce yourself and share more about who you are, what you do, and a bit about your vision and thesis. Yeah, sure. First of all, thanks for having me. I think augmented intelligence is a great name for the podcast. We talked a lot about the philosophy that you and I have discussed in our work together as well. Um, so I have been an investor and an entrepreneur for the last 25 years, uh, most of it a general catalyst. And uh, I would say the first decade was in um, Boston, where I did a lot of work around mobile and clean energy. And then I moved here in 2011 to build the firm's presence in uh, Silicon Valley. And a lot of that has been, in my try to summarize it, it really about reorganizing society online. What is that going to look like? And, and the role that technology and data and the AI that got activated because of cloud and data and the role these technologies are going to play over the next 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. And and one of the things I was I was really intrigued by and I'd love to hear more about is we, we had obviously this, this revolution with the foundation models that are very generalized, but even since 2018, you've been talking a lot about sort of the, the, the opposite of looking at a very specialized set of industries. Can you talk a bit more about that part of your thesis? Uh, yeah, so... Um, I think there's this theory around you build these foundation models that are gonna, they're going to do everything, right? This whole idea of someday that there's artificial general intelligence, which we can debate about as to do we want that to happen or not. Um, and, um, you know, our belief is that in certain industries where we have a huge amount of responsibility in the way we touch people and we touch their lives, that just having a generalizable language model is not going to be uh, sufficient. So our focus has been on what we call applied AI. And the applied AI thesis really is aligned with this whole idea of augmented intelligence to say, how do we empower humans to deliver important services in society, whether that's legal services, that's healthcare, that's financial services, in a way that's uh, uh, you know best uh, for our citizens. Excellent. And and speaking of healthcare, I mean, that that, that is the area that you, you've obviously had a tremendous amount of success, and which is an industry that I talk to a lot of other founders and people almost give warnings, don't even try because it's it's just so complex and there's so many uh, kind of a graveyard full of startup skeletons. Can you talk about just just sort of what you've done in healthcare and, and how you're able to have some success there? Yeah, so so I've been for over a decade now working on transforming the healthcare industry. And you know, if you close your eyes. And you said, what should the healthcare industry look like 30 years from now? You would say it needs to be proactive because consumers want to be healthy first and foremost. They don't want sick care. It needs to be affordable so we can serve everybody and accessible so that it's actually available everywhere. So I've sort of worked with that design principle to say, how do you go about doing that? And the reality is that when you take on the task of transforming an industry, you can't do it alone. So first thing is you have to think about this idea of radical collaboration where us as technologists, how do we team up with experts from the industry? And so there's been this whole idea of can we partner with the health systems? Then the question is, how do you actually deliver health insurance, proactive, affordable, accessible? And that's all been about if we can make our health systems be vibrant institutions, if they can be more profitable, if they can have better use of technology uh, in keeping people healthy, then they can use those resources to invest in uh, technology and in their communities so that everybody can have affordable and accessible uh, uh, care. And so this idea that there's no mission, no margin, that profit and purpose are deeply uh, aligned, and can we actually use innovation to help these institutions get there? That's a lot of the work we have been doing uh, at General Catalyst uh, towards the healthcare transformation. Amazing. Yeah, and, and I'm going to talk uh, and, and ask you about what are some of the parallels between healthcare and the other industries like legal that, that, that we'll get into? But just sticking with healthcare for a minute, can you talk more about, uh, I, I completely agree that this cannot be done by one technology alone, one startup alone, even one startup, one VC alone. Um, what are some of the 
incentive problems that you saw in healthcare and how did you go about addressing them? Yeah. First of all, I think your point about no single technology company can do it is right. I always say the Amazon of healthcare is not a trillion dollar company, but a trillion dollar ecosystem. So we've actually been building a set of companies uh, that focus on this. The problem in healthcare uh, is a fundamental uh, misaligned business model. And the idea is that who pays and who benefits are two different folks. So we never have a market behavior in this industry because, you know, if you ask a patient, do they want a certain procedure? Oh, by the way, you don't have to pay for it and uh, it's going to do X, Y, Z to you. Uh, cost is never a concern. It's always about, of course, like if, if, you, if my doctor is selling me, I should just go do the procedure uh, versus really thinking through economically what's the best thing. And so there's this misalignment because insurance companies are paying provi providers and consumers are making their decisions. And that leads to just uh, all kinds of issues in the way these industries develop. You can actually trace back, uh, you know, the evolution of these industries and how these misaligned business models have called issues. Advertising is another one, right, where you'd have the same issues. Advertisers are paying. Consumers are the ones that are actually being influenced by the content. And so everywhere that's the case, the way we think about it is that can you in the process of transforming those industries, rethink those business models and realign all the stakeholders uh, so that you actually are making sure it's not just about profit, you are creating long-term impact that's good for everybody. Excellent. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, m maybe now as a segue, I'd, I'd love to hear what are some of the parallels that you see, and we've talked about this at length, but for, for, for the audience between healthcare and legal, and as you were learning about Udia, what, what about that really kind of appealed to you? What, 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 what sort of diligence had you already done in the space? Yeah. So I think the big opportunity with AI and augmented intelligence is to create abundance in the industries that we're tackling. So as I mentioned in healthcare, the idea is, can you create healthcare abundance? Can you actually serve consumers in a way that is not cost prohibitive, prohibitive in terms of the workforce? There's actually a lot of parallels. First of all, uh, not everybody can access the best lawyers. So there's this this lack of inclusivity when it comes to legal. And we need to, uh, you know, we think we have an opportunity with augmented intelligence to make everybody that's in the workforce be fully empowered to do the best work in a way that's affordable for everybody. So to me, that is a massive unlock. Uh, I think, uh, you know, we talk a lot about responsible innovation, which is inclusive, sustainable, and respecting our civic and democratic values. I think the fact that we can provide that uh, by rethinking this industry, that's an important idea. The other thing I would say is um, when you have that mindset of can we bring abundance to an industry with AI, you really do have to think about transformation at scale. So it, it, it can't be that you're applying AI in some point solution where you have to think about the entire workflow. You have to think about what is the purpose of this, this industry, this function, and, and what should it look like and, and try to get there, you know, uh, sort of in a systematic way, but not, uh, uh, not sort of thinking about individual stakeholders because you'll sub-optimize what that, the eventual abundance is going to be. And so I, I think there's a lot of parallels uh, in legal vis-a-vis -vis healthcare. And, and uh, you know, one of the things I'm very excited about is how you're thinking about then catalyzing the ecosystem and really a movement around how, uh, you know, in our democracies, the legal system can work for everybody. That's ultimately the goal that I think uh, Yuria's vision will uh, enable long term. Absolutely, yeah, and I think one thing we've we've connected over a lot is this concept of responsible innovation, uh, which which to your point, when in healthcare people's lives are on the line. In the case of legal, it's it is also their lives. It's not their their health per se, but a single legal event could still bankrupt the average American. So um, yeah, that 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 really is core. What would success for Yuria look like from your perspective? So. Look, when when you and I and our firm decided to be partners, we said this is our platform uh, uh, sort of commitment in this space. So for me, I sort of, again, think about long-term saying success is we really did transform the space. So the question is, what does that mean? I think to me, first of all, um, this idea that we make legal services fully accessible for everybody. I think the second thing is we do it in a way that truly is augmenting intelligence to humans uh, so that we maintain the agency uh, to make sure the spirit of the law is manifested in the way business gets conducted broadly. You know, we do a lot of work with large enterprises. And one of the things I'm very excited about is how their uh, engagement and their legal department is going to transform because of this. 
I think the visionary uh, CLOs are going to be looking at this thing. Can we actually transform the workforce? Can we actually have a partner with who we can do these deals in a cost-effective, concise, and intelligent way uh, such that our business teams are also aware of what we've actually done? I think a lot of times what happens is that you, you do these deals and the businesses don't fully understand uh, what you're accomplishing and the consequences of those and the intelligence you're going to be able to bring to that whole process so that the chief legal officers can be better business partners to their management teams. It, it is something that you're going to be able to accomplish through this process. Mm -hmm. The other thing I would say is I, I got to imagine, um, uh, you know, engineering talent, legal talent that wants to go transform this industry is going to find this very interesting because the, the kinds of problems you guys are working on, some of the demos I've seen and in our board meeting, it's pretty, pretty compelling. I think these are pretty interesting uh, you know, societally interesting and technically interesting problems. So I do, I do hope uh, that in a few years we're going to see and say this is the best team that uh, got together to take on this problem. And then I would say I think you know the the legal industry at at large. Uh, this is a workforce transformation play. I think there's a lot of things uh, that are extremely interesting and exciting that lawyers do, and then there's a lot that's a drag for them. And I think taking that burden away so they can focus on, again, being better business partners to their clients, uh, which is in, in some ways what UD is going to be able to do is sort of architect a model for what the future law firm that's powered by AI is going to look like. And so I think the workforce is going to be happier in the industry. I think your team is going to have a lot of fun, fun sort of building what we're set out to be building. And I think your, your, your business customers, the legal offices, are going to feel like we made their role more important and relevant uh, in the companies as well. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things that I was I was curious about, given the thesis, and it's a very creative, non-conventional set of moves for a, a traditional VC to make. What do you say to people who ask, "How is this different than private equity?" Yeah, first of all, we have stopped calling ourselves a VC firm. We actually describe ourselves as a global investment and transformation company because uh, our goal is to, f to partner with folks like you and then really finish the job in terms of transforming these industries. Because a lot of what's happened traditionally in the tech industry is you build companies, you take them public, you get out, and you let society deal with them and their consequences. And our view is let's have much longer term game plans around transformations and, and therefore work with you on a much longer horizon, make sure you're capitalized uh, uh, to play, play the long game. And, and we do it in a way that profit and purpose continue to be aligned for all stakeholders. So I think that's kind of the core philosophy in the way we think about it. And, and I think in that context, you know, our belief is that uh, it's not just about building companies. It's about building ecosystems. It's about aligning business models. And it's about innovating in partnerships with the industries that we're working with. And I, I think that's a lot of... Uh, the, the apparatus we're able to apply here to Judy as well. I'm excited to do that work with you. Absolutely. Uh, well, Hemant, this has been a really informative and rich discussion. I'm incredibly excited about the work that we can do together and hopefully provide a blueprint for the rest of the industry and the industries that we're both thinking about to, to continue to follow. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. And I do think we have a great journey ahead. So looking forward to it. 